Team Kestova, welcome back. Another week, another PE example problem. Before we begin, pull out your phones and remember to text the like button to tell him to come to class, all right? We are in class today, we change times, and by clicking the like button down below, you will remind him via text to get his butt into class. Remember, this channel and the information I provide is for education and entertainment purposes only. These are example problems only and do not substitute for advice from a professional engineer. So make sure if you're working on stuff like this, that you seek out a professional and are working under a professional engineer for your projects. All right, let's jump right in. The maximum factor shear in a six inch by nine inch concrete beam shown is 2000 pounds. The compressive strength of concrete is 3000 PSI and the yield stress of the steel reinforcement is 60,000 PSI. That's all the info they give you, but they also give you a little diagram here. Um, so for us, we know that this dimension is going to be six inches and we know the overall height H of the beam is nine inches. So let's jot these down. What is the required shear reinforcement? That's our question today. Um, they give us four options. Looks like all of them are the same size number three bar. U stirrup, so that would look something like that if we needed to place them in the beam. And then they give you a certain spacing for each option. So obviously we're gonna be jumping into the ACI 318. Uh, I believe this upcoming exam is still the 318-14. That's what we're gonna be jumping into today. It's got a little baby blue strip on the side with a white cover. So first off, I would do the following. VU, because from above, they say factored shear. So it's already factored. And for concrete design, we stay in LRFD, not ASD. So VU, our ultimate, we know is two kips. So that's our demand. That's great. Next, we need to know phi VN. What is that? Well, phi VN is compromised of V, v sub C, which is the shear capacity of your concrete alone, plus phi V sub S, which is the shear capacity of your steel reinforcing inside of the concrete beam, because it's a reinforced concrete beam. There are two material types that are inside of this structural element. So we need to find both of these. And ultimately, the question is asking, what is this guy? Okay. Let's figure out if we even need shear reinforcement just based on the capacity of the concrete itself. So we are gonna target this guy. Well, phi V sub C, we're gonna jump over to chapter 22 of the ACI, 318, 14. We're jumping into chapter 22, which is, as you can see, sectional strength. This actually is a segue from, if you were to look at the beginning of the book, the chapters, we're working with a concrete beam. So you'd go to chapter, I believe nine for beams. And then as you read through the beginning of chapter nine, it actually kicks you over to chapter 22 when you are determining your uh, steel reinforcement for your concrete beam, okay? So that's kind of the ultimate segue on how you would get here. Personally, I think that the ACI is laid out poorly and over the previous versions, they have continued to change things with the layout like all over the place to make it even more confusing for us. But maybe that's just my opinion. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking about the ACI, but for me, it's on my bad list. We're actually gonna now jump to uh, section 22.5.5.1. I know, mouthful. Right here, for non-pre-stressed members, that's us. This is non-pre-stressed without axial force. Again, that is also us. Uh, v sub C, shall be calculated by the following equation. All right, so let's take that equation back and plug it into our calc. So V sub C is gonna be 0 0.75. That is phi in our case for concrete, uh, for the strength of concrete in shear, two, it's just a numeral within the equation, lambda, which is just 1.0, and that's based on the type of concrete that you're using. This is just regular weight concrete for us, so it's just 1.0, square root, of F prime C. Ooh, we did not specify F prime C. Did they give that to us? Oh, they did, of course they did. 3000, all right, so right here, let's make sure we write down everything given. F prime C, our compressive strength, is three KSI. 3000 PSI transfers to three KSI, and then our yield 
stress of our steel bar is 60 KSI. Both those are pretty standard. 3 KSI might be a tad low for concrete strength, but that's still completely workable. It's still very, very strong. So F prime C, we erase that. Let's plug it in. One key thing here, notice how I plug in 3000 PSI. Uh, this is a square root, so make sure you're plugging in in units of PSI, not KSI in the square root, because it messes it up. Times base width, which is six inches, times depth D, not the height. It's not your, your gross area of your section, all right? It's your basically kind of like your effective section where that steel um, is the bottom of your stress diagram. 7.5 inches. All of that comes out to 3.7 kips. All right, so this is our capacity. So you're like, wow, phi V sub C is greater than VU, which equals two kips. Well, that means we're done, right? That means we pop back at the top and it's, and it's D and it's none and we're out of here, right? Well, hang on a second, don't click off. Um, it may turn out that that is the correct answer, but it may not because we still need to have other checks that we go through um, that are not just dependent upon uh, the capacity of the member itself. There are other provisions in the code that may require us to still include shear reinforcements. We need to check those. And we all know what those are, right? So we know that we need to check AV min, the ACI for everything for steel reinforcement in any type of member uh, has minimum ratios that you need to follow unless you fall outside of the criteria and they allow you to not have to follow um, the minimum requirement. So we need to check those. Well, AV min, you're like, where is it? How do I get it? Okay, so AV min is actually now on chapter nine. So that's over at our beam chapter. Let's start over there right now. Quick little pit stop. If you notice here on page 135, you know how I was talking about the segue from chapter nine that actually kicks you back to chapter 22 for your shear reinforcement and your concrete shear capacity. Well, here's our segue actually right here. I happen to skip right by it. Boom. So V, um, V sub N shall be calculated in accordance with 22.5. That's how it kicks you back over there. Okay, awesome. We're gonna pump the brakes at actually page 138 where we have section 9.6.3, minimum shear reinforcement. There we are. Um, and directly below it, it gets into the information that we need. So a minimum area of shear reinforcement, AV min, that's what we're looking for, shall be provided in all regions where VU is greater than one half of phi VC, except for the cases in table nine below. This is just this table right here. For these cases, at least AV min shall be provided where VU is greater than phi VC. Well, let's take a look at what we got here. So case where AV min is not required if we follow that criteria. Phi VC over two, or times 0.5 is less than VU, but which is less than VVC. One half of VVC is 3.7 over two, which is 1.85 kips, which is less than VU of two kips, okay? But VVC is 3.7 kips. So this criteria works out so now we just need to check the requirements of the table. And if we meet all, all requirements of the table, then we don't need to account for AV min. Let's check these requirements. All right, shallow depth. So cases where AV min is not required, if you meet that criteria, we meet that criteria. So let's check the cases that they provide here. Beam type, shallow depth. And that's the condition where H is less than or equal to 10 inches. Well, our H, is equal to nine inches. And again, H is the full depth of the beam. Doesn't matter where the rebar is. H is that right there. So that means we're classified as a shallow beam. All right, so that's us. Uh, anything else here? Let's see, integral with slab. That's not our condition. Constructed with steel fiber, reinforced normal weight concrete, conforming to blah, 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 blah. That's not our condition either. And then one-way joist systems. One-way joist systems, that's not our our problem either. So shallow beam, that's what we have. And we meet that condition. So we do not need to account for AV min. AV min is just zero. We 
can go back up top with our green pen, and we can now confidently say that the answer is D. No shear reinforcement is required. Now, before you get out of here, um, a little intuitive thing that start to be clicking in your head. Now, you should always be going through these checks, obviously. Obviously, everyone. But you can start to pick up uh, right away for me. I noticed in this problem that, going green here, your, uh, your sheer demand of two kips for a beam this size, I mean, even if, even if it wasn't a beam this size, two kips is, is minimal. That's not a lot of sheer demand uh, for a concrete beam. So seeing that, that kind of first made me scratch my head and go, all right, I don't even think steel reinforcement would probably be required, but I still need to check with the ACI to make sure that all the guidelines are met that permits me to say, yes, steel reinforcement is not required, okay? So don't just jump the gun when you see a demand that's low, but you can know kind of in the back of your head that, okay, I'm working with lesser loads here, so I think I might be, get, I might be able to get away with a more lightly reinforced concrete member. All right, so just kind of pick that up there. One other thing that stuck out to me right off the bat is that answers A, B, and C, they all provided, although be it very, very light steel reinforcing, so number threes doesn't give you a whole heck of a lot, it still gives you a lot of additional capacity, but looking at the spacing, 3.75 and 4.5 inches, that's, that's decently tight. So that would be a pretty heavily reinforced concrete member, um, especially for shear. So that, based on, again, that two kip load, uh, it's not really adding up in my head where I would kind of just kind of bypass A and B and say, you know, I really don't think that's required. But I did notice that when you say 24 inch spacing, there is minimum spacing guidelines um, if you do need to include steel shear reinforcement. And that 24 inches is one of those guidelines, one of those minimum criteria that almost never controls, but that is one that stuck out to me that I was like, okay, they are, they are referencing parts of the ACI. Um, so I'm gonna wanna check this through completely and know that confidently we don't need shear reinforcement. Might have been a little too much for you, but hey, um, thank you everyone for bringing the like button to class, reminding them via text. If you've been on the edge of your seat this entire time and you're thinking about subscribing to this team, well, don't think any longer, act. Subscribe down below, and for everyone who got out their phones and alerted the like button to get the class, I see him up there and it looks like he's got a huge smile on his face. This is Rich with Team Kestva, and I will see everybody next time. Good luck with your studies. Later.